on a collision course with your aching skull. Will your children learn to throw this boomerang? And this has a couple of off-color words. I hope the children forgive me. This is a patriotic holiday weekend. This is a piece I wrote a while ago that sums up my feelings about patriotic holiday weekends. <laughs> super America, super duper America, mega patriotic patriarchy, super successful super America, everything you have always wanted, being all it can be, so don't fuck with it. Super short hair suit and tie supremacy, super America. Superintendent of the domain that is imminent. Superhero man is an American. Super clean and white. Super true and blue. Super dead and red. Super duper super American. Super corporation of sanitation at the service station of the most winning nation. Super America. Super death squad financier. CIA freelancer. Promoter of the super cancer, super, 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 super America. Capitalistic elastic waistband on the trash bag plastic. Super hysterical hysterectomy hysteria with a rhetorical historical channeling into super America. Super phobia about dysrobia in the suburbia blurbia with bubble trouble, super addictive wonder drugs. Sweep it all under the rug and give your kids a super hug. Super economical, religiously astronomical, periodical, but methodical, super governmentality, probing super deep into super decay of super decadence, super shocking. Super holistic, holocaustic, chemical toxicity in the immediate vicinity of super America. Super and duper in need of repairica. Super America, 7-Eleven Intelligentalia of the super new, super size, super duper storm trooper, super America, super amped out on the southern continental caffeine bean, America, ka, ka. super flag waving patriotism, always needs a bigger prison, super fucking America. This is something since it's Ali Young's birthday. Yeah. I got to read with him some years ago in Lemert Park at the world stage. And um, Al's writing has always inspired me to write about music and with some musicality. So this is something I wrote about uh, a jazz great from LA that um, I liked a lot as a kid, still the Buddy Colette who uh, passed away. So this was uh, something I read on uh, Buddy Colette's death. This is called Buddy Collette Gets His Rest. Shining shoes on 95th and Compton. Mingus had the bigger shine box. Swinging jazz for cents to barely make a dollar that splits into trio, into quartet, into sextet, into all night jazz jam sessions like when Bird got out of the studio. Buddy is there with Dexter, and Red, and Gay, and company. Bird is healthy, so he shuts it down like everyone hopes he would. There is a school in session every night, all night. Buddy moves from session to session, from sax to flute to clarinet and back to sax, from record to record, back to session, ahead to the mirror, from club to club. Steady, man. Steady. Man, was he steady. Steady at the bottom of the beat. As friends become legends, become ghosts, become memories, as he finally makes his exit at 89 to go be the band leader of all the saints as they go marching in, marching into cool West Coast jazz, swing so low as they go, as they go, man, go. These cats act like they no longer know all those lyrics that they blow and blow. Go, down, go. Still playing on my radio. Don't you ever go anywhere but here, right now. With that sound that cat left us, gifted as we are by his everlasting tone. 
with that sound, it might get quiet, but it never has to be silent anywhere, anymore, anytime. Go on, buddy, go, man. Make that sound forever in my mind, forever there with that sound. Get your rest now with that sound forever. Just one more quick San Francisco poem. This is called Emperor North. Called the world his oyster, opened it one day just to heat it up raw, pearl and all. Took the title for himself, wore the hat and uniform, even printed his own catch that the bar keeps gladly accepted to keep him entertaining as he gave speeches, bequeathed titles, stood on street corners like royalty was real. He showed the world what a charade any crown could be. All you had to do was take a title for your own. Stand proud, stand as tall as your legs could hold you. The rest was just ceremony left for fools to follow. Thank you. Thank you. Please help me welcome to the stage also an editor and publisher, Be About It. They had a wonderful show last night uh, celebrating the most recent magazine issue of Be About It. it was, and also a published uh, author of Punk Hostage Press. Please help me welcome poet Alexandra Naughton. I should read uh, some poems or just like a short story or should I just do both? I feel like the story was pretty good when I read it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marilyn Monroe appears walking into court wearing messy long platinum blonde haircut with Stevie Phoenix bangs. Her, her eyes cannot be seen, but her cheeks are full, and she looks kind of adorable in an oversized black sweatshirt, like a grungy cherub with plastic mermaid hair. She straightens her wig. Let's get started. Reckless endangerment in the, the bailiff says, now looking at Marilyn Monroe. Gesturing toward a large desk, the bailiff asks, will you please step up? Marilyn Monroe brushes some of the wig out of her face, walking, shuffling forward, slowly in her slippers, to the desk alongside her lawyer. Yeah, she says, looking at the bailiff for what to do next. Marilyn Monroe stands coyly, twirling a few strands of wig, then reparting, smoothing down on each side, checking so most of her face is covered. Thank you, he says. Reckless endangerment to the second degree, attempt, uh, attempted tampering with physical evidence and unlawful possession of marijuana. Pre-sworn affidavit is signed. Counsel, have you read it? Marilyn Monroe's lawyer, a stubby man in a black suit and dyed brown hair, looks up, says yes, looks back down at his papers. The district attorney, a quiet man in a gray suit, calls, Your Honor, the people would like to move to amend to reflect in the paperwork that the defendant's name is first name Marilyn, that's M-A-R-I-L-Y-N, last name Monroe, M-O-N-R-O-E. Marilyn Monroe is grooming herself, running her fingers through the long front strand. She stares straight ahead, shaking her head, mouthing some silent words, lots of O shapes. Her eyes still cannot be seen. Her lawyer is looking down at his papers. Your Honor, the DA says, at this time we request the bail in the amount of $1,000 cash. It was observed that the defendant was cutting open a cigar purchased from a corner store, then using it to roll a marijuana cigarette, which she smoked in the lobby of her apartment building, and later throwing a bong out of the 34 or 36th floor apartment window where there were people below. For these reasons, Your Honor, we request bail in the amount of $1,000 cash money. Marilyn Monroe shakes her head as in disbelief. Her lips are without any type of lipstick or polish, or almost the same color as her face. 
The same with her wig. It is as flushed out and destitute as the color of her face. The look is semi-garish, and if it weren't for her dainty features, her full lips and her upturned nose, what then? The long disheveled wig hair italicizes the look of innocence about her. A lost child who removed her leash and strayed too far from mother at the zoo. A small girl who couldn't find her way out of Wonderland. Your honor, her lawyer starts, I would ask that Miss Monroe be released on her own recognizances. There was no bong. Let me just ask the people, the judge interrupts. Was there anything recovered here, or was this item allegedly thrown out the window? It is not clear what Marilyn Monroe is staring at, if her eyes are even open at all. But she seems to be gazing at something intensely. She makes no movement other than the occasional sway. She is stoic. Perhaps she is picturing herself sunbathing on a tropical island, cool drink in her hand. Perhaps she is trying to remember where in her apartment she hid the canister containing four grams of orange velvet. Perhaps she's just thinking about which can of soup she will eat when she returns home. One can be certain. Not according to the report, Your Honor, the prosecutor mumbles. According to the complaint, Your Honor, defense counsel cuts in. There was nothing recovered from the sidewalk. If you read the last sentence of the criminal court complaint, Your Honor, it clearly indicates that nothing was recovered. So clearly a search was made for the bomb. Nothing was recovered. My client completely denies ever having thrown anything out of the window. Marilyn Monroe moves her head up and down in agreement. She looks like a grade schooler facing a bully with her older brother or some other type of male figure as backup. She is leaning forward and moving her head up and down and she seems satisfied. She is tossing the long front strands of her wig from her face and she seems to be pleased with her defense. Nah, nah. Only her lips and nose can be seen from behind the wig. Defense continues. She was followed illegally into her apartment for no reason. Um, she has filed a complaint, I believe, with Internal Affairs for inappropriate action by the police department. She has never been in any trouble before, Your Honor. One may consider the headlines, poor, poor Marilyn Monroe, young starlet hooked on drugs, Marilyn drops the bong, get thee to a mental hospital, Marilyn Monroe smash hit. One may think what she is doing is working. The judge asks Marilyn Monroe, do you live here in Manhattan? Marilyn looks straight forward as she has been, looking up and moving her head. I do, sir. She is just like a good schoolgirl. And do you plan on staying in Manhattan? Uh, Marilyn Monroe takes a moment, moving her head. Um, yes. Go ahead, counsel, the judge asks. Defense counsel says, under the circumstances, we ask that Ms. Monroe be, re be released on her own recognizances, Your Honor. All right, Miss Monroe, we're going to release you today, the judge begins. Marilyn Monroe is smiling and nodding subtly. Even though the DA has asked for bail because, the judge pauses for almost exactly three seconds looking at Marilyn Monroe, I believe you're going to return. The courtroom erupts in a soft cloud of dull, whispering conversations. Everybody is talking about Marilyn Monroe. She threw a glass bong out the damn window. What's with the black sweatshirt? Did she bang some guy and steal his clothes? I can't believe this bitch got away with it again. What kind of weave was that? It looked like she didn't even brush her teeth. She looks like she smells. I bet she was stoned for the whole proceeding. Marilyn Monroe is looking down at a piece of paper on the desk that the bailiff is holding. The bailiff is explaining something to her. Take this here, sign this here. Marilyn Monroe is moving her head up and down. She is not playing with her strands. She is behaving. If you fail to appear, a warrant will be issued for your arrest. The bailiff has done this thousands of times. Thank you, sir. Marilyn Monroe enunciates the words loudly, drawing out the R, sir. Thank you, Marilyn Monroe, Monroe says, taking a pink slip of paper from the bailiff, waving. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Very cool shit. And you know, Roman Jean's birthday is next week, too. It's on June 1st. So, thank you, Alexandra. That was great. Now, uh, I want to, without, you know, I mean, our musicians are just the bomb and once again anybody who arrived late uh, came up wrote up with me from new orleans and we've worked together so many musicians uh please help me welcome to the stage mr lauren pickford who's been on the keys 
also his fantastic son, Lucas Pittman, on bass. The next person that I'm going to uh, ask to come up and will also be joining us in his second set on guitar, but uh, he's a poet and a wonderful editor and a publisher, and uh, I am extremely fond and have great admiration for his work. He is dynamite. I love him.